Postdoc transformation. Postdoc transformation. Postdoc transformation. Invest in your postdoc transformation. Welcome to the weekly show for scientists leaping into business. In every episode, we are happy to recommend employers of choice for you. For your career transition, we offer customized career transition e-courses and memberships also at graduate schools all over the world. Maybe yours too. And if your university isn't yet our customer, enroll in your free email course for career transition made simple as linked in the show notes. I'm your host, Professor Dr. Anna Sui Winkles, and let's build your postdoc transformation with this episode. Transitioning your career from science into business. All right, ready, set, go. But how? Welcome to your 10-step plan to transition your career into business. And the good news is you've already made the first step. Or if you haven't, go back to episode one where we shared how to check your readiness to leap out of science. And I'll make sure to put the link in the show notes. So if you haven't, stop now listening to this episode and go back and listen to the first episode first because there I have 15 factors that you need to consider to reflect before you leap into business. So from now on, I'll be assuming that you have listened already to episode one. And maybe if you're there, also check the second episode where I share my benefits of having done a PhD for me as a mom, as a professor, and as a business owner. So this way, you maybe have something that, you know, you can aspire to, to have because you do a PhD at the moment. All right. So what are the 10 steps to transition your career into business? Number one, you checked that you are ready to leave out of science. Okay. Number two, How to build your sustainable LinkedIn? Well, that's a great question, right? So most of the PhD students I know are afraid to, you know, start posting, start being active on LinkedIn. And I totally get it. It's like totally different to science communication in general and academia, but also it's totally different to communication and networking on TikTok and Instagram, Facebook and Twitter or whatever. So it's a huge different world. But the only thing is, if you seriously want to leap from science into business, then LinkedIn is the place to be. Sorry to tell that, but LinkedIn is the place to be. But why? Well, LinkedIn is the platform globally where experts, recruiters, people in business, leaders, business owners, and everyone who makes business is probably active. Either they are having, you know, they have a voice and they post a lot, or they like and comment, or they are just passive consumers of the content of the people I just mentioned. And you don't have to pay for an account. You can also use a free account just like me. I I do have a free account still, Um, but you can use that to, you know, foster your career because you can show that you're open to work or you can also have a business account if you are a company, maybe one day later. And also there are accounts for recruiters and also for salespeople. And so when you look at this demographic, that is probably older, more advanced in their careers, probably the key people, not all of them, obviously, but some of them might be the key people that you can ask for informational interviews or who can be role models for you so that you can emulate some of their business behavior. So with knowing that, you should now check the industries and also the business roles that you are interested in and look for these industries, companies, business roles, etc. Type that in 
in the search bar and find the people who are currently representing this company or this role. And there you have the first people that you can follow. So how can you follow? Well, the initial step is to open an account. And again, you don't have to pay for that, right? You can have a free account and that is enough to get you going. To this date, I still have a free account. And when you open the account, then you can see that you can insert a picture of you, a photo of you, and also that should look like your new aspirational identity, right? So your professional identity that you want to achieve after leaping into business, that's the photo that should be, you know, making this point. And there's also the CV like section. Okay. And here's a big warning. Please do not just copy and paste from your academic CV into the LinkedIn profile. That's totally boring. And also it doesn't tell a potential recruiter or a potential contact anything about you, right? So try to find information that is relevant for those you want to network with. Well, and if you don't have an idea to, you know, how to fill that in, maybe you can check out my LinkedIn profile. I'm Professor Dr. Eleanor Sui Winkles. You can look it up and then you see all my CV entries. And did you know that I offer deep dive e-courses, workshops and memberships at graduate schools, maybe also at yours in the future? Ask your graduate school coordinator, whether they want to book my services so that I can deliver them to you 24 seven, 365 on your mobile device. Number three is how to read social media and also how to network within social media, especially also in LinkedIn. So while I mentioned all the other platforms, which are more fun, I would always say like TikTok, Instagram and stuff like that, I have to say, the place to be is LinkedIn. And you should then follow or at least identify and then follow informative patterns of key people's activities, right? So um, early on, I said you have to identify uh, companies, industries, roles, then you will find the people and these are the ones you need to follow, right? So for maybe a couple of months, down the road, you should follow them and then see whether their posts, their comments, everything, what they, you know, articulate voice, whether that aligns to your values, whether you would love to work there in their organizational culture. Step number four, how to research your favorite jobs and employers. So there are many point of views how you can tackle that question. But the best is to go from, you know, inside to outside, right? So inside is what are your transferable monetizable skills? And if you have no clue, go back to or don't remember anymore, go back to the first episode where I explain why your transferable skills need to be monetizable to be attractive for a business recruiter. And you can check these, your transferable skills, your monetizable skills, and then see where are the jobs that need these skills. And the other direction is what's the outside, right? The outside perspective is what are the, what is the future of work? What are the industries, the companies, the roles that will thrive in the future? And you need to find the best next, not the, you know, ultimate, but the next match between the outside and the inside perspective. And just because a lot of people are going in this direction or another direction, you have to still find your own way out of science. And this leads to question number five. So how to do informational interviews to get insights? Well, the question is really, 
How do you get these insights that will inform your job application so that you know, well, yes, this is the industry, this is the company, and this is the role that I want to apply for. And you can't just ask a random person that you have just connected via DM or you just followed for a couple of days on LinkedIn and ask that person to do an information interview for 30 minutes or so, right? You have to ask yourself whether you would love to have this kind of request. And you probably will say, mm, it doesn't feel okay, right? Because you are probably asking them to reserve some of their precious time. I mean, remember there are doing business, right? So it's precious, valuable time on their side and what's in it for them, right? And now it's time to thank Company ABC who sponsors this episode of the Postdoc Transformation Show. I would now be reading the company's answers to one of six bold questions so that you can choose to apply. For example, number one, describe your most valuable experts versus leaders in your company. Have they typically earned a doctor title? Or number two, for which of your company roles or units do you encourage somebody with a doctor title to apply? Number three, how would you describe your organizational culture in which your most valuable experts and leaders thrive in? To nominate an employer of choice so that we can ask our informative, bold questions, click on the link in the show notes. And now, back to the Postdoc Transformation episode. You need to build relationships first before you can ask them for a favor of doing an information interview for you, right? And let's move on to question number six, how to create your customized application, right? So it is really offensive for a business recruiter to read applications that are not customized for the company and for the role. And to be honest, I don't even think that you will make the cut between the robotic recruiting and to the human side, right? Because the, you know, the robotic recruiting is powered by natural language processing. And if your cover letter and your CV and everything that you submit is not tailored, not customized, towards the role, job description, etc. of the company, then it will probably have a, a low matching score and then your application will be automatically sorted out before it will be placed on the desk of, you know, or on the computer of a business recruiter, a human. So what else can you do? You need to examine and also court your preferred employers. Because even if you are applying within consulting, then there are a couple of consulting companies and they all pride themselves to be different. And if you can't grasp what the difference is and reflect on that you are the one who wants to make them making the difference, well, then you probably won't win. Because at the end of the day, you have to make them want you in their company. All right. And if you think that these are a couple of things that you want to note down or, you know, reflect on or where you need a little bit more structured guidance on that, I strongly encourage you to check out the show notes where you can also find the link to our website with the full transcript of this episode but also the link to our free structured guidance via an email course with 10 emails that guide you step by step until you land your job in business. So let's check out number seven, how to prepare your thesis from a business point of view. Well, you need to be able to have an elevator pitch like a one minute explanation of why you did your thesis and what were the major outcomes relevant for whatever, whoever, right? Especially in the business context. So you need to have an executive research summary. And this elevator pitch can be based on your executive research summary. That will be like one page of explaining 
why, and that's science communication at its best, at its best, right? So you have to be explaining why your research is relevant for the society, for the business, and whatever. Because let's assume that you are successful in your job application process. All right, so you have handed in or submitted your CV and your cover letter. It went through the robotic recruiting and also convinced a business recruiter to invite you for your first interview. And this is the point where you will be glad that you have your executive research summary with all the practical and business implications that you have it ready before you need it, right? Because then you need it. Because I can reassure you that the moment that you receive an invite, your brain goes blank, right? Because now it really is you have to step forward to get the job. And that's why you probably don't have the time and also the, you know, the mental capacity to rewrite your research executive summary, right? And if you just had an aha moment, I want you to, I mean, I really need a like on this podcast, wherever you are listening to from, right? So please like this episode. Okay, on to... Question number eight, how to apply to your favorite employers, right? So if you are just like me, you probably have your favorite employers and you, if you are leaving academia, if you're leaving science, what you have, you know, worked so hard for, then at least you want to leap into that company. And that's the last company you should apply to. Why? Well, because it's like you have your, you know, when you learn a new skill, and that is job application in business at the moment, when you're learning a new skill, then you still have your training wheels, you know, and you don't want to, and you probably can't impress your favorite employer on your training wheels, right? So this is why you have to reverse engineer your job application process. You can have a reverse order of application order so that you can sort of have dry runs with the least favorite companies so that you can practice with lower stress levels to perform well when you have to. And if you have followed all my previous steps, then chances are great that you can now choose. And that's number eight. How to choose the right job offer? Well, what are your decisive factors? And that's totally individual. It's a different setting for you as a person who is, you know, free, have no liabilities, have no obligations, have, you know, whether you are the breadwinner or you are not the breadwinner, whether you are, you know, um, a little bit more advanced in your age or, you know, you're still free to go somewhere else and so to speak whether you are a mom or whether you are pregnant or whether you are you know have your family obligations that will maybe also be decisive for you and that's why you need to figure out what's important for you and once you have determined your readiness to leap and you think yes this is the way forward i want to transition into business or industries then you can if you like enroll in your free email course with 10 actionable bingeable email lessons until you start your job in business you'll get 10 emails that detail number one how to leap out of science number two how to build your sustainable linkedin profile number three how to read social media and network number four how to research your favorite jobs and employers number five how to do information interviews to get insights number six how to create your customized applications number seven how to prepare your thesis from a business point of view Number eight, how to apply to your favorite employers. Number nine, how to choose the right job offer. And number 10, how to prepare for your new job. Woohoo! Hey, have you found this episode so far helpful for yourself? 
Well, maybe you can subscribe and also share this episode with your PhD bestie because that would encourage us to help the underprivileged, underrepresented, and underserved early career scientists leaping into business. And now back to the show. Within academia, you probably always had limited contracts and also not well paid,、um, you know, salaries and stuff like that. But it is different, and you have to make up your mind. With regards to what is aligned with your vision of life, and question number ten is how to prepare your new job, right? So the best thing that you can do now that you have gone through all the nine steps previously and you made the contract, you signed the contract. Now it's time to prepare for your new job, right? So clear your mind, right? So. Leaving academia means that you will change profoundly, because if you are just like me, you probably have identified yourself as a scientist, as a researcher. That has been always something that you know, at least for a couple of years, been your identity, and that's why you need to let go of that, and letting go. Of something that is not serving you is totally hard, because you've maneuvered yourself into that situation, and now you're leaving, and you cannot start a new job, especially if you're first for the first time leaping into business, with having a clouded mind, and that's why you need to let go. And the best tip I can give you is to rest. And also, maybe do if you can afford it, do a holiday that will help you to have a clear cut between the old professional life and the new professional life. And then you also should start to digest relevant info that is through your network in LinkedIn, maybe that you find all the information. Um, all the current obstacles, the challenges that the company is facing, the industry is facing, something like that. So networking in person, maybe they already have a you know a summer fair or a summer com、um, a company party or something like that, or Christmas parties are all these social gatherings. In person will help you to jumpstart in your new job. So there you have it. These are the ten steps to transition your career into business. Number one, how to leap out of science. Remember that's episode one. If you haven't heard it, number two, how to build your sustainable LinkedIn profile. Number three, how to read social media and network within social media. Number four, how to research your favorite jobs and employers. Number five. How to do informational interviews to get insights. Number six, how to create your customized applications. Number seven, how to prepare your thesis from a business point of view. Number eight, how to apply to your favorite employers. Number ten, how to choose the right job offer. And number ten, how to prepare for your new job. And if you want to learn more about it and want me to help, you know, to hold you accountable. Then enroll in my free email course so that you get ten email lessons, step by step instructions, and also you know you can put them on your calendar so that you can work through them as you can. So in closing, invest in your doctorate according to your vision of life. So that means for all these steps, you will have to reserve time. And if you are ready to leap out of science, then you have to do this while you are still doing your PhD. Okay, and if you do that, you will manage your postdoc transformation. <laughs> do you want the transcript of our episode and our episode sponsors' answers to all six bold questions so that you can choose to apply? Do you want to nominate your employer of choice so that we can ask them our bold questions? For all of that, check out our clickable links in our show notes, and on our website www.postdoctransformation.com, you can also check your readiness to leap into business or enroll in our free email course, Career Transition Made Simple. 
Thanks for your attention. I'm Professor Dr. Alan Sui Winkles, the host of your weekly postdoc transformation show. Postdoc transformation, postdoc transformation, postdoc transformation.